Thank you. Yes, okay, so Kevin Grant from Bismarck. So I'm today supported by Louise Blunt and also Granger Forson. And what we're going to be doing in the next half hour or so is to help start challenge your thinking. That's what we like to like to do, get you thinking a little bit, and we're going to get you to do a little bit of work. And um, as Kate said, we're going to share a little bit of our in-flight checks as, as well. But I'm not going to I'm going to start there. I'm going to start at looking at some of the some of the fundamentals of scaling scaling up. And we're going to take a look at the scale up journey. We've heard that word journey used quite a lot actually this morning in different different contexts. So I'm going to continue that theme and also look at some of the success pillars for scaling up. So no doubt if you've been in business for a two what just for a moment, how many how many people here are either owners or leaders in a business with more than 20 employees? Okay, quite a reasonably large number. And how many are either owners or leaders in a business with less than 20 employees? Okay, so slightly more, but not the not the usual split. But um, so let's let's just have a have a quick look at this. So if you've been in business for a number of years, you're probably enjoying a certain level of success already. You may be starting to be a little bit out of control at times, maybe even a little bit overwhelmed, and you might in fact be not sure if you're doing things right, or even know quite where you are, or how you how you've even got there perhaps. Maybe you're wondering about how you manage the next steps and take control of things. Maybe you've got challenges with increasing team stress and cash flow pressures. And perhaps you've also got half an eye on trying to build a valuable business, the kind of business that someone may even want to buy someday. And perhaps even wondering if in fact your business is scalable. Because scaling isn't that easy. And you've probably worked out by now that it's not one tip or magic bullet that is suddenly going to deliver on that. And the stats prove it. Over half of businesses fail within the first five years, two thirds within the first 10. 99.3% of all businesses remain with fewer than 50 employees in this country. And the big one, less than 4% actually increased beyond 10 employees in this country. And in our experiences of working with several hundred business owners, two things separate out those that succeed that don't. One is working to a proven system and strategies to scale, and that's understanding the scale-up journey and its difference from linear growth. In other words, properly planning and executing for scaling up and not just drifting into growth. And also understanding and harnessing the power of peer working. We've heard that this morning already. Working with in monthly small with monthly small groups, like-minded people, business owners, so acting as a sounding board, sharing ideas, experiences, helping overcome barriers to scaling up, keeping each other accountable to the key things that need to be done and avoiding distractions from the less important things. So let's take a look at what we mean by the scale up journey a little bit more. It's a series of stepping stones or staging posts. It's not a straight line or even a wiggly line growth. And the first level of these, of course, is the first level, the solo solopreneur. The second is then when we've typically got three to five people working around us, then age 12, 20, 25, 40 to 60, and, two, and um, 250 to 600 typically. If you prefer looking at it in terms of the financials, then it's typically 100K, half a million, about a million, two to, two to three million, five million, 25 to 60 million. It varies by sector, of course. But why these numbers? Because it's based around team sizes and effective team units working on the number of those units. So let's look at just a little bit more detail. That first one on our own, we could build a great little business here. Possibly a consulting type model, highly profitable, nice place to be, we can climb that ladder of success. But it's a different ladder from the three to five level. That ladder is different, the pillar's different. We've got to manage increasing complexity, Certainly a bit of communication complexity, but we've also got to make sure we've got the right business model, go to scale, because we've now got to pay decent salaries, perhaps, to our employees. And it's no longer good enough to have good and bad months where we can take a little bit less each month. We can't expect our employees to, to do that. Not to mention the challenges we're facing about recruiting and managing a small number of people. So we've begun that transition from owning a job, essentially, to now owning a business. And that three to five post is a really good place to be. We've got a team that's big enough now to benefit from collaborative thinking. And three to five actively engaged people, hopefully, helping to build the business and drive the business rather than just one. 
but it's small enough that we don't have too much in the way of compl complexity. And so it's not so hard to manage and control. But we can't step from that one level ladder to the three to five at the same level. We have to join it at a lower rung, essentially. Because if you think about it, we've got to invest in that transition, even if it's only in terms of paying our staff, but probably also got to invest in improved lead generation activities. So we're going to get a dip, essentially, in between, or a valley before we're able to climb, sometimes referred to as a valley of death. And you'll hear me talk about that a little bit more in a moment. And we can languish for ages stuck in that valley where we're wondering where the cash is going. And we might slip back to the first one, we get it wrong, or we might even kill the business altogether. And that time it didn't quite work, might slip back to that one, <laughs> we might even kill the business altogether. <laughs> So that's why most businesses don't even make it to the three to five level. They might try, they might take on an employee, get it wrong, and then slip back and the employee leaves or they get it wrong. So that's perhaps the most obvious step, easy to understand, but the same happens throughout the scale up journey. The ladder for the eight to 12 is different from the three to five. And likewise, as we go up, and each time there's this valley of death in between each one, where we've got to recognize and plan for what it needs to look like at that next step, and how we make that transition. So we need to think about what needs to happen for that transition, and how long that transition is going to be. So are we going to move from the three to five to eight to twelve in our three-year plan? Is it our five-year plan? Is it longer? Is it shorter? And how much cash are we going to need to make sure we don't get stuck in there? Is that going to come from organic growth, from our cash flow, rather, our operations, or do we need additional finance? So from three to five to eight to 12, we're typically thinking about improved systems, especially lead generation, and marketing is often the biggest challenge at this point, but also account management, retaining and growing existing clients. And it's probably the stage where the leader follower model runs out of steam and we need to have a leader leader type model, developing other leaders behind us within the business. We also might need to think about quality, things like ISO. And also we tend to have, as we've heard from the technology side before, we get lots of applications doing different tasks. And now's a good time to start thinking about consolidating those. So, this is a great place to be. Um, in spite of some of these increasing challenges, it's a really good place to be. We're now big enough really to benefit from the collaborative thinking. We're less vulnerable from one or two people leaving the business, but we're still not so large that communication becomes a real issue. But it does need work, and as I said, it's often that time for like number two. So, this is a really big step now. I'm going to take a bit of a breath because, as you can hear, trying to keep up with that is uh, <laughs> going to be out of breath. I need to breathe. So, going from the uh, going from the eight to twelve, twenty-five is a big step, and we might want to think about whether we're going to do that by maybe merging or or acquiring. And communications and a layer of management, and particularly financial management, become crucial at this point. And financial management here is often one of the biggest weaknesses. And it's a time to start thinking about either a fractional or a full-time financial director. So we have these challenges, so on and so on, as we progress up. At each stage, we need to think about what does the success ladder look like for the next one? Have we climbed it before going on to the next, next one? So planning and what we need to transition that valley of death. And doing so from a solid platform, ideally from the top of that pillar, before we launch ourselves into the valley. But by the way, it's perfectly fine to identify a stepping stone that you are comfortable at, that you want to get to, and build a great business for that. You don't have to just keep on scaling just for the sake of it. So, that's a little bit about the overview of the scale-up journey, a whistle-stop tour. 
have a look at the four pillars to scale. So in order to scale effectively, there are four pillars. Strategy, people, execution, and cash. And if we're not good on all four of those, then we're gonna get stuck. And it could be early on in our business when we've just got maybe, maybe just one or two employees, or it could be later on in business, we've got hundreds of employees, millions of pounds of turnover, but we can still hit a ceiling as to where we can go if we don't get working across all of those four pillars. A little bit more detail, truly differentiated strategy and scalable business model. We've got to be able to attract, hire, and retain the right people. We get the culture working really well. We've got to get the right people to execute ruthlessly, with ruthless efficiency and focus in the right way. And of course, we've got to manage the cash. And businesses will fail to scale or simply fail altogether if they don't work on all these four pillars and get them working really well. The emphasis of each pillar may change depending on where we are on the scale-up journey, but not the four pillars. And when transitioning from one pillar to the next, or one stepping stone to the next, we need to do so in the light of those four pillars. So in terms of strategy, what differences might we need around there? In terms of our people and how we execute, and executing includes things like business development, but also efficiencies through the technologies and other means, but then also from the cash point of view. Overarching these four pillars are two further principles, that of leadership and of building for value. And leadership in the early days is typically around self-development and becoming the best version of ourselves that we can, that we can be. But as we get to the age of 12, we need to be developing those leaders behind us. And in terms of delegation, early on we need to be delegating things that we're not so good at or shouldn't be doing. I mean, bookkeeping, all of those good things. But after the age of 12, we need to think about delegating the things that we are good at to avoid becoming the bottleneck in the business and creating an owner's trap for ourselves. So if we're the one bringing in all of the key account sales, then we need to be able to delegate that and find somebody else to do that. Burn for value is also essential for ourselves to build value for ourselves, but also for our stakeholders and the investors that we may have within the business. So do we understand how to really create value and to build options for ourselves in the future? That's whether to maybe sell the business, or to step back from the business, pass it down perhaps to employees or to family. Because one thing we can all guarantee is that we will exit our businesses one day, willingly or not. So wouldn't it be great that when we do so, we don't have to shut the business down, which is what's happened to a majority of businesses, or to arrange some kind of fire sale. Wouldn't it be fantastic if it could fund whatever it is that we want to do next when we stop that business, whether it's a new business venture or whether it's simply our retirement. So there we have it, an understanding now and a quick overview of the scale-up journey, why it's important to recognise it as a series of stepping stones, stage posts, and those valleys of death in between. And we've got a framework of a proven system to help us to scale up. So that is that part of it. And now what I'm going to do is hand over to 